Hello everybody, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Tarot Memoirs. This week we are going to be looking at justice. Uh, so in this series, if you are new to it, I typically has, the series has three parts. So each week I make a video about the next card in order in the tarot. And first I look at some excerpts from my favorite tarot books, which I have next to me here, and share those with you, the pieces that sort of stood out as meaningful to me personally. And then I look at some and share with you some different images from my tarot decks of those cards, or of that card, for comparison. And then I usually share some personal experiences with the energy of that card with you all, which is why it's called Tarot Memoirs. So I don't typically do timestamps or anything like that, but if you're most interested in the memoirs piece, you're more than welcome to skip to that part at the end. If you want to look at card comparisons, you can kind of skip to the middle-ish portion. And if you want to hear everything, just start from right now. So let's just jump right into it. So 78 Degrees of Wisdom by Rachel Pollock is the one that I usually start with. And for justice, here's some pieces that stood out to me. So here's the classic Rider Waite image. This is the Centennial Edition of the Rider Waite, by the way. <clears throat> I like the coloring. It's nice. It has a back that looks like that. Anyway, so the legal justicia to give her her latin name was blindfolded to demonstrate that the law does not discriminate and applies to weak and powerful alike that was the first passage from rachel pollock's book that really jumped out at me um so in some tarot images i believe you will actually see a blindfold on this card but the idea is impartiality and lack of bias that's the issue behind the point of justice is that it's applied equally and evenly. It doesn't matter who you are or your station in life or how much money you have or any of that kind of stuff. So the next bit I got. The way to understanding lies in responsibility. As long as we believe that our past lives just happen, that we do not bring our own selves into existence through everything we do, then the past remains a mystery and the future an endlessly turning wheel empty of meaning. But when we accept that every event in our lives has helped to form our characters and that in the future we will continue to create ourselves through our actions, then the, the sword of wisdom cuts through the mystery. And she does have a sword in this image. Further, by accepting responsibility for ourselves, we paradoxically free ourselves from our past. I thought that was a really powerful uh, passage from Rachel Pollock's book. There is a ton of pages on justice. There's only a couple other things that I highlighted here that particularly stood out to me. In tarot readings, one should always pay very careful attention to the card of justice. Its appearance indicates, first of all, that events have worked out in the way they were meant to work out. That is, what is happening to you comes from situations and decisions in the past. The card signifies absolute honesty. At the same time, it shows the possibility that your actions in the future can be changed by a lesson learned in the present situation, which is really empowering in a way. It's like you, you might need to really look at the decisions and actions you're taking now because there will be ramifications, good or bad, in the future. And I think that's a powerful reminder. Reverse, the card indicates dishonesty with yourself and others, an unwillingness to see the meanings of events, and shows especially that you are missing some opportunity for a greater understanding of yourself and of life. So that's sort of the shadow side of that card, according to Rachel Pollock. In Benabel Wynn, uh oh, did I lose my bookmark? Totally, hold on, let me put that back. In Benabel Wynn's book, um, The Holistic Tarot, or not the, just Holistic Tarot, um, she has, this is actually a very meaty book, by the way, and you can see these little um, marker marks on the side here. That's where the card meanings are. So this book is not like this thick on card meanings. There's a ton of stuff in here, and card meanings is just a small part of it, which this book is massive. So anyway, so in Justice in Benabel's book, I have, let's see. The theme of justice is external balance. The justice cards can suggest that balance will be restored in the seeker's life or that there is balance to the conditions or there is balance to the conditions in his or her life, but it is hard for a seeker to understand or to see that at the moment. The outcome that will best bring balance to the seeker's life is the one that should occur. Sorry for the glare. I'm trying to figure out where to put this book because it's so massive. Okay, so I'm just going to have to put it over here and face funny. Um, let's see. Let's look at a compare. Oh, wait, no, there's more. Compare. Yeah. Key 14, temperance, indicates internal balance. Justice may indicate that justice, fairness, and a detached impartiality are critical influences or factors in the current situation. Um, another comparison. Compare Key 10, Wheel of Fortune, which su suggests the karmic turns of life, the balance or equilibrium beyond the seeker's immediate control. 
The Wheel of Fortune is about the universe's adherence to the laws of motion. Justice is about the personal adherence within the confined scope of the seeker's life. Key 11 justice is about human-made balance and equilibrium. It's about human-made justice. Note further what the nature of justice of the justice is. It is human-created justice, not divine justice. So the laws of man are at play, not the laws of nature or the laws of the divine. Compare key 10 wheel of fortune, which, which, ah, I can't talk, which suggests a greater divine justice affecting the secret situation. So the wheel, which we looked at last week, looks at sort of events that are faded or outside of your control um, and that are coming from more of a divine place. But justice looks at sort of the systems in our world that denote what is fair and how that comes into play. It's also an impartiality card, I think is what I said before. So in shadow, this card is what is fair will not feel fair to the seeker. When the justice card appears upright, it suggests that what is fair will feel fair, but in reverse, what is fair will not feel fair. Either way, fairness is happening. It's just a matter of whether it feels fair or not to the querent or to the seeker. So I thought that was a really cool perspective. And finally, I like to end this section with Rachel Pollock's Kitchen Table Tarot. And our action phrase from this book is, I am balancing. I am balancing. That's that bit right there. So I highlighted a few sections here. First, if you look at the card, there is no water. Now, I never noticed this before, so that really stood out to me. There is, um, this is a bit unusual for tarot cards, particularly in the Major Arcana. No water, no emotion. This card is about being critical and impartial. There is no room here for empathy. Squishy emotional types like me get very uncomfortable when this card comes up. It's cold, objective, and very, very fair. It doesn't care if you had a bad day or if someone bent your feelers. <laughs> I love that. Inverted, unfair. Overly emotional and ridiculous. It's like trying to win an argument by saying, because. That has no merit, and it basically translates to, because I want to, and if you don't let me, I'm going to hold my breath till I pass out. Simmer down. So I really like that. But I do think that, that really what it's talking about is that it feels unfair. The way she's expressed it here is, is either you're feeling that something that is fair is unfair or you're being unfair and unjust in your behavior and your actions. So different things to look at from the shadow side here for sure. Let me put my little bookmark back. All right. So let's look at some card comparisons. So as a reminder, I'll be curious to see if, if water shows up in any of these cards. Hopefully not. That would be kind of cool. So here's our classic image. We have the Sword of Justice, which is double-edged, um, indicating oops, indicating that it can cut both ways, for or against you. And we have the scales down in the other hand. And there's a rigidity and a formality to this. Um, there's two pillars and a curtain or veil of some kind behind, but this does not indicate passage to any kind of inner wisdom. It seems to indicate that um, justice is cut off from human con or from our day-to-day -day concerns, if that makes sense. It doesn't care if, like, you, like Rachel Pollock said, it doesn't care if you've had a bad day. It's just going to be applied equally regardless. So let's look at some of um, the card images from my tarot collection here. So I'll start with the Osho Zen Breakthrough. This is funny because this has always been a very, very powerful card for me in readings, but I don't necessarily see that this as justice. Um, this has actually got the energy for me more like breaking loose of the chains from the devil. That's what this makes me think of. It doesn't make me think of justice. So this is one way in which I would say that the Osho Zen Tarot does differ from traditional. If you have the Osho Zen or you read with the Osho Zen, I'd be curious to see how you associate this card with the meaning or the traditional meaning or the right or weight meaning rather of justice. So if you have some thoughts on how the two correlate, I would actually really love to hear them because this is one that really diverges for me personally. Love our little alligatory type ish friend in Justice in the Tarot of the Magical Forest. He's still got the scales. They're really, um, they're there, but they're really like small, like hard to see on this card. And my camera's not focusing, which doesn't help. Um, but still have the sword. This is cute. I don't have a, like a strong feeling good or bad about this card, but it's cute. I love Justice in the Mary L. This is clearly picturing Matt. Um, M-A-A-T, the Egyptian goddess of justice, with the feather in one hand. And Matt would typically weigh the feather against a heart. So this is actually a really common image, um, the feather and heart in the scales for justice in the tarot. You'll see this show up in other images, probably even in my own collection, but I've definitely seen others. These aren't all of my justice cards. I've just pulled a handful of decks. 
So this is Justice in the Tarot of the Hidden Realm. And I like to show this deck because it's very different in how it depicts. We still see the lightness of the feather there. And she is pulling her sword. And the impression I get is that the heart's been measured. She's determined that whoever she's dealing with is needing some justice and she's about to deliver it right now that's the feeling i get from this card and i haven't read the guidebook but the guidebook uh, for this entry rather for this card but the guidebook in this deck tells a story so i'd be really curious to see what it says about that i really love this justice card from the textured tarot um we have the scales there we have this beautiful woman who's in a headdress that appears to be come on camera let's see if i get really close for a second I think I moved too much. Let's see if I, oh, I'm sorry it's blurry. It's not blurry for me. Come on you. Maybe if I give it words. Ah, there we go. I gave it words. So there's a heart and a feather and she's got an Egyptian look to her and she's got the sword at the ready as well. Um, so I definitely get that impartiality and that feeling of justice. She's got a bit of a stern look on her face as well, which I really appreciate. I love this deck. I love the artwork in this deck. Oh cards are falling. Okay. Anna K. Tarot features um, what looks to be a lawmaker or a judge or something at a desk. This looks very formal. Interesting here that we see the black and white pillar of the of the high priestess um, behind him, which uh, Yoaz and Bokim, I'm saying them totally wrong, but, uh, and it's been a while since I've done the high priestess card, but yeah, definitely we get this idea of the book of law uh, in front of him. And again, my camera doesn't want to focus. It did so good on my last video. That was the Anna K. Tarot. This is Legacy of the Divine. And I get the feeling that one of these figures' job is to mete out compassion and the other to mete out uh, punishment. So it's very reminiscent of that feeling of judgment. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus. There we go. It's really, really beautiful. I'm not a fan at all of the Wild Unknown Justice card with the black and white cats. Like, I don't get it. I mean, there's still the sword, I suppose. Um, and I mean, cats are judgy, right? Cats are judgy. <laughs> this is how I interpret cats. Um, so I kind of get that, but it's not my favorite. I enjoy Justice here in the Shadowscapes, which I will share with you in just a moment. She's got a feather in one hand. She's got a bunch of butterflies. The art is really tiny in this card. There's a lot to see, um, and the cards are not big enough, but really really appreciate this image I like the butterflies and this idea that you can transform a justice experience into something powerful and empowering to move forward with I kind of love the blue china plates in the justice card on the bonfire but this is probably also not my favorite I think it's just a little bit too something I don't know there's nothing on the plates I think that bugs me a little bit um, we don't really have a sword we have like a what do you call that thing that spade -ish thing she's holding um, I don't know. She doesn't look really prepared to mete out any justice to me. She's just like kind of, it's almost like she's holding the justice pillars like, ew, I don't want to touch this. That's yucky. So maybe that could be something I could read into. Um, justice here in the everyday enchantments is very clear. There's been like some kind of car accident and these two figures are fighting and justice is like, I don't really care what either one of you think. I'm going to weigh out the situation and decide what the, what the correct recourse is going to be and who it's going to affect. Yep, here we go. Heart and Feather, Sun and Moon Tarot, Justice. This is really beautiful and clear. This deck does a really good job of giving you all the symbolism you need in an uncluttered way where it's really easy to spot it and connect with it right away. Beautiful. Really enjoy Justice from the Mythic Tarot. I can't remember what figure is represented here, um, but the owl makes me think a little of Blodiweth, but that's a Wel Welsh pantheon, not Greek. So I'm not actually sure who this is supposed to be. We still have the scales. It does bug me that nothing's in the scales. I've noticed as I'm going through these that that's something that I don't like to see. So yeah. You all probably know by now that I can't stand the Impressionist Tarot. My, my opinions about this have gotten more and more vocal each week, but there's nothing in this um, in the scales that this person is holding. She's got the sword, but she doesn't seem ready to use it, and she seems almost bored. So nothing about this is doing it for me. If you have this deck and love it, please do share your thoughts below because I don't want my perspective to be the only perspective on this deck, but I don't like it. And then finally, I have the Druid Craft Justice, and I do really enjoy this image. Um, we have the scales. Are the scales empty? Dang it. These ones are empty too. Why are they empty? I don't like it. 
<laughs> I want there to be things in the scales. Heart and feather is good or something else. But I do really like the um, presence in this card. Let's pull it from my face so it'll focus. Yeah, I really like that. So that is it for card images for Justice. And finally, I'd like to share my thoughts on Justice and a couple of experiences that I think can relate, or at least an experience that relates. So day to day, um, what did I put down here? I, I literally keep notes. So I can be like, what am I going to talk about for the Justice card? And you don't have to sit here wait, waiting for me to like rack my brain. Um, so one of the ways that Justice sort of connects with me personally is that in general, societal rules, laws, things like that, I'm actually real good buds with, like to the point where it's almost debilitating at times. I'm like, can't break that rule. Like, I don't know, just I can't think of good examples of when I'm like really stuck on it. But day to day, light wise, from a from a light perspective, my comfort with rules and societal rules and my memory for like what the rule is, is helpful when we're dealing with a bureaucratic process or a red tape process. Um, I talked about that a little bit in, uh, I can't remember which card, but I talked a little bit about navigating the immigration process and sort of using that comfort with the system to get us through. And I might've talked about that with the Hierophant, I can't remember, but um, sometimes that actually really serves me well, being able to work with an established structure. If um, I'm at work and I'm given a particular rule or a deadline or something like that, I hold myself to it and I'm really good with that. Where this shows up for me in shadow, of course, is sometimes I have a tendency to hold these external laws or rules a little higher than my personal judgment or ethics. And that can get a little tricky because sometimes I just assume that the, the laws or the rules are more important than my personal ethics. And sometimes this gets a little left behind and I'm not advocating that I should be breaking laws to follow my ethics, that's not really what I mean, but it can be easy to become a little bit, for me, to become a little bit rigid about that and not consider the bigger picture or look at the gray areas in law or in rules. So that can hold me up a little bit. The one real experience with justice that um, I feel like I wanna share is my first and only ever speeding ticket. <laughs> so this was an interesting experience around sort of what is fair will feel fair and all that kind of stuff in a, like a positive way. So I had been totally speeding. I was going down on the I-5 from Seattle to Portland and there's a spot along the I-5 highway, freeway, where the speed limit, which is all one speed limit, I think it's 60. I mean, I've been in Canada for a long time, so I can't remember now. I think it's 60 is the usual speed limit. Yeah, it's 60, I'm just having a brain moment. But so 60 is the normal like sort of freeway speed through the major areas of the I-5 corridor in Washington, like in the major Puget Sound area, like Seattle to Everett, Tacoma, that sort of whole area is all 60. It's different now. I think they have a variable speed limit traffic flow, but that happened after I left. So whatever. But then when you get far enough south um, on the way, so I think it's just past Olympia or around Olympia, south of Tacoma, I'm just giving you cities that probably mean nothing to you. But when you get far enough south, the speed limit goes up by 10 miles an hour from 60 to 70 which is really exciting if you're driving a long distance because you're like, yes, I finally get to go a little faster. And I got caught in a speed trap like right before the speed limit went up. So I had already like noticed the usual landmarks and started upping my speed before the speed limit officially went up. So I get pulled over first time ever for speeding and I was given a ticket and I didn't argue it. I'm like, I was speeding. Like that's the rule, right? But I was talking to a friend of mine at the time who was a lawyer and she's like, well, I'll come with you. You can do the court thing. You could just pay it and it'll go on your record or you can do the court thing and maybe not have it on your record. So she came with me to represent me, which was super fun because um, it just felt all official and important. And most people do not bring a lawyer with them to a speeding ticket court session. So that was kind of entertaining um, in a weird way. But we get there and she didn't argue that I was speeding, which I thought was really cool and felt comfortable for me ethically. She didn't argue that I was or wasn't speeding. What she argued was that this was my first ever infraction. It was in an area where I'm expected to increase speed at a certain point and since it's my very first time ever, could I maybe have something a little lighter so it doesn't go on my record or whatever? And so there wasn't an attempt to get me out of the speeding ticket so much as it was like, hey, can we do something so that her record stays clean since this was a unique situation for her? Um, and so I was ended up giving, they ended up giving me a fine and giving me basically like a, a year where as long as I maintain safe driving, don't get any other tickets, then at the end of that year period, this would come off of my record. So it'd be on my record temporarily. And as long as I behaved, it would come off again. And that was a really interesting experience because it was definitely where justice was dealt. It, was, it, it gave some leeway for the experience that I had, 
but it still expected me to take responsibility for my actions and maintain that safe driving going forward. So I know that's a really dry story, but justice is kind of a dry card. Like it's not about emotion. It's not about how I was feeling. It's about what did I do? What were the consequences? And how do I feel about that? And because that's how I see this card, especially in light of this week's study, I kind of am like, okay, that makes sense. And that was a time when fairness felt fair. And honestly, at the end of the day, if nothing had, if I had not been given that leeway, I wouldn't have walked out feeling like life is so unfair. I was speeding. So there's a consequence for that. And I think I would have been okay with any, um, consequence in that situation, not any consequence, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to go to prison over a speeding ticket, but um, the usual consequences, like if they'd have just said, no, you've got to pay the ticket, I would have paid the ticket and it would have been what it was and I wouldn't have been like butthurt over it. It just would have been what it was. So that was definitely my, my one and only direct sort of encounter that I could think of with justice in the official sense of the word. So that is what I have to say about that. I hope that you will engage with this content in whatever way that you are comfortable. Uh, As always, I welcome any kind of response, whether it's a comment down below, a chit chat in our Facebook group, or, um, you know, a video response or anything that you're comfortable sharing. I really enjoy hearing other people's perspectives and definitely some perspectives on the cards. I really enjoy that. If you see me hold up a card and I'm like, I don't like this, I'd love to have some perspective there too. So if you have thoughts to share, please do share them. And finally, in case you're into the idea of doing some journaling on this card, I have a few journal prompts I've selected as usual from Journaling the Tarot, a little book of big questions by Andy Matzner. So the first one, what consequences are you experiencing due to a previous action on your part? The second one, how is guilt impacting your life? What might you do in order to release that guilt? Three, what are you an example of? How does that make you feel? Four, for what do you accept responsibility? And finally, five, do you believe in karma? And if so, how is it operating in your life? And all of these may apply or not apply to justice specifically. I see the karma question as almost more of a wheel question, but it is still that idea of responsibility and like, and that sort of thing. So engage with whatever you want to engage with as always, you know, just take the stuff that works for you and just leave the rest behind. But I hope you enjoyed this week's series. Next week, we will be looking at the hanged man. So I thank you so much for joining me and watching and engaging with this content. And I will see you all again very soon.